the 29th of July, Be Awesome had a Q&A livestream on YouTube, where they showcased the return of the original Alpha Map, but this time in Unreal 5 Engine. During this two-hour livestream, the community were able to talk and ask questions to the devs. In this video, I will be compiling and summarising the information. Due to the current Day of Dragons map having features that are no longer supported with Unreal 5, it cannot be converted for testing purposes. While we're all waiting for the 1.0 map due to drop in either December or February next year, testing of the Dragons and UI can still commence on the old map to make sure they are ready for 1.0. Devs are currently working on fixing the main bugs and issues with the port before the testers will then gain access to the branch to basically break and go over with a fine tooth comb. Once it's looking and working as it should, the test branch will be open for people to play on and experience Unreal 5 for themselves. A couple of key aspects of the Unreal 5 that's noticeable in this test build are the biometric clouds, which you may be able to fly in and through as they're planning on bringing down the cloud level below the height cap, and of course the lighting system. With Lumin, the lighting of the dragon is much better than the old heavy shadows caused by the dynamic lighting of Unreal 4, and you can really enjoy some of the details a lot more though some of the skin materials may need to be shifted to avoid the glossy wet look. Speaking of which, whether we will also be brought into the game thanks to Unreal 5, we can expect rain, snow and sandstorms. Concerning existing dragons, they will not be touched on the current map, which will become a legacy build once 1.0 is launched. You will still be able to continue playing the current build. As they develop the Unreal 5 game, they will update the test server with new features and, if those features can be ported to the Unreal 4 version with very little extra work, then those updates could find their way into the current game. The legacy servers will remain open until they're no longer being regularly used by players. The new Mega Map will require fresh spawns to introduce the new system and codes, including a new pattern and skin system. This will mean that new and old players will all get a fresh start on the new map. The skin system is getting an overhaul and will be much more dynamic. Before an egg is laid, parents are able to influence the skin using colour gradients that their own skin genetics provide, as well as from their grandparents. Patterns will also be in the game, but they have not yet decided how much influence parents will have on them and it may well depend on how many fertility points your dragon has. There are also plans to further develop the genetic system concerning stats. Melanistic, the black skin, will remain as an unlockable skin for those who are not in the Kickstarter. However, you will need to re-unlock it on the new map, as well as each server you play on. The gameplay loop for Day of Dragons will mainly focus on surviving. There will also be boss creatures such as the sand and snow slayer worms, which will drop pearls when killed. The larger the worm, the better the loot. These items can be carried by dragons in their internal crops for a variety of boosts or cosmetic effects. The pearls can also be looted off other players. There is no plan for a treasure or hoard mechanic other than these pearls that give effects. Animation is currently ongoing for the Infernal Ravenger, Bio Dragon, and soon the Blitz Striker. The Magma Elemental is ready to go when the new map and dragons launch, and when it comes to AI, they are working on the Sand Slayer Worm, Dune Weaver, and new Tropical Fish. The Swamp Snapper and Whiskered Panatail are pretty much complete now. The dev team currently have three animators and are working to sign up their fourth. Be Awesome also wants to introduce a lot more AI and really bring each biome to life, but they need to make sure they get all the Kickstarter dragons finished before they focus on the biodiversity. The bio dragon will be purely a nectivore and only able to feed from special flowers found in both the caves and around the map. No meat for this cutie. It is expected to be able to grow to full adulthood in around an hour and 15 minutes, with the Zygovi dragon expected around 45 minutes to reach adulthood. There will be no quest to speed up growth, but you can earn mutation points from completing quests as well as pearls, lore and quest progression. So while one quest might not give you a big reward, it could unlock the ability to talk to other quest givers. The devs however are looking at a quest that will let you respect your dragon. There are going to be a lot of caves scattered around the map, as well as lots of little nooks that only hatchlings can get into in order to hide from adults. There will also be caves big enough for adult dragons to live in, both shallow and unconnected, and full cave systems. Work has not yet started on the Draven Hybrid due to wanting their team to have experience before tackling the four wings. They have leaked some details on the mechanics. In order to unlock the hybrid, you will need to find its egg in the wild, and during its incubation progress, you'll be able to pick its skin. Kickstarters will be able to spawn as a Draven when it's released, but will likely have a cooldown to keep it rare, so keep it alive. Other hybrid dragons are planned in the future. 
The development team are interested in implementing different horn and tail choices. However, due to the way the growth system works, the additions would not really play nicely as the dragons grow. It is something they are open to, but it's not something that is really important at this time. Footprints will be added in 1.0 version of the game, and they're working on different flapping sounds for each of the dragons instead of using the same one. A latching system is also planned for some dragon species, as well as the ability to climb some select trees and ledges. Each species of dragon will have its own spawn zones, such as the flame stalker around the burning forest and volcano, or the bio dragon in the shimmering caverns. There will also be penalties for certain dragons being in certain climates, such as the flame stalker having a debuff in the frozen area. The Infernal Ravenger is planned to be a very offensive wyvern, and very good up close, whereas the Flame Stalker is much more balanced and has a greater range. A sandbox mode is planned to let players test out different dragons. There is no plan on adding dragon on dragon collision. There are more combat attacks planned, such as tail and claw swipes, or even horn attacks. There will also be balance changes to the dragons each time a new one is added to the roster. And while there are no plans to change the slow stamina drain while flying, there will likely be adjustments with the much larger map coming, depending on test feedback. A feature they want to make use of in the Unreal 5 is data layers, which would let the world change for one person, but not everybody else. This would give quests more of an impact if they are resolved around a story element. It might even mean larger dragons could knock over small trees, at least visually for a time, but that is something they would have to look into. All dragons are planned to have more than 5 calls, the Acid Spitter already having many of its new ones. Emotes however are on hold until after 1.0. When 1.0 is released, the Kickstarters who have the beta tier will be able to spawn as the Infernal Ravager a week before other players, but after that week, everyone will be able to select this dragon in the spawn menu. As for the other new dragons, only players with the Bio Dragon key will be able to spawn as the Bio Dragon, and only players with the Blitz Striker DLC will be able to spawn as the Blitz Striker. All of these dragons, however, can nest in others as much as they like without limitations. As breeding is the only way to increase your bloodline stats and unlock new skins and patterns, there will be plenty of nests going around. The Bio Dragon will have no combat abilities and will rely on its small size and speed to survive. It will, however, have a bioluminescent spit that can cause other dragons to glow. Instead of a bite animation, they might give it a harmless lick. The Nurse Dragon has not yet got its official name. It has been rigged but not weight painted and will be due, along with the Singe Crest, in the 1.1 update. Swimming and underwater exploration will be getting a big overhaul as the ocean surrounding the Mega Map will be its own environment. This includes aquatic dragons, with the first being an eastern inspired long drake. This is due in the 1.4 Ocean Store update. The long drake will be added as one of the starter dragon options that require no unlock method. There also is a three headed hydra in the development plans. A venom drake and amphitheater are also planned for update 1.5. Venom is meant to work much like acid, but instead of draining stamina and armor, it will drain health and bile. The current plan for the Venom Drake is to be about the same size as the Acid Spitter, and for it to have a scorpion-style tail, but it's still very early in development. The devs would like to add mod support in the future, but it will come much further down the line. Lastly, game events for holidays are looking likely. I hope those caught you all up and you've learned something new. See you all soon!